I kid you not, one of the best techniques that we have as bass fishermen is a drop shot. All right, there we go, buddy. Largey there. I mean, he's probably a two and a half pounder. I just love fishing. If you're like me, it doesn't matter how big they are sometimes. It's just fun to catch them. A drop shot, whether you fish in ponds, rivers, or lakes, is one of the most effective tools to go out there and catch a lot of bass and some big bass. And today, I wanna show you a few tricks that you can do with your drop shot to start getting a lot more bites. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. If you take just a minute to click those links down below and check out Sportsman's Outfitters, you're gonna find that they typically have the best prices across the internet on your favorite lures. Not only that, but right now, if you use the coupon code BFHQ10, you can actually get 10% off any arc fishing rod. This is actually my favorite all around drop shot rod, wacky rig rod, and shaky head rod. It is the kind of shaky rod in the Cobb series. And with that coupon code, this rod is only 90 bucks. So if you guys are on the market for some fishing rods, click those links down below in the description and you're greatly gonna help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Now, the first trick when it comes to fishing a drop shot is less of a trick and more of a tip. And the big tip here is simplify your drop shot fishing. I think a lot of guys really overcomplicate the drop shot. And the reason that I think that they overcomplicate a drop shot is that a lot of times when you see guys fishing a drop shot on TV, maybe that's on the Bassmaster Elite Series or on Major League Fishing, you see a lot of guys that are using a drop shot kind of in correlation with their electronics. So they're, they're using their electronics, they're dropping down to fish that they see, and they're catching those fish. That is a great way to catch bass, but the thing about a drop shot is you don't have to use it with electronics. You don't have to vertically fish a drop shot either. One of my favorite ways to go out and fish a drop shot is by simply casting that bait out, whether I'm fishing on a boat or whether I'm fishing from the bank, casting it out and simply just dragging it back to me. This is really similar to the way that I would fish a Texas rig, but I am fishing that soft plastic in a little bit different manner. And the other thing that guys complicate a lot is the rig and the soft plastic that they use. You know, for me, I really use just two different styles of soft plastics on a drop shot. The first soft plastic is some sort of straight tailed worm like I'm holding here. These actually are my favorite soft plastic worms to use on a drop shot. This is a fat six inch robo worm and this is a skinny four and a half inch robo worm. Now when I'm fishing for specifically largemouth, that's when I'm gonna use this fat six inch robo worm. This actually is my favorite color, which is a margarita mutilator color. It's a phenomenal color that I have used to catch bass in really clear water and really stained water. But when I'm fishing for largemouth, a lot of times you're fishing around heavier cover. You know, sometimes that's stumps or brush piles or maybe grass or weeds in a pond, whatever it may be. If I'm fishing a drop shot with this worm, a lot of times I'm going to rig it Texas style. Now I'm gonna talk about rigging in just a minute, but just know that I use this six inch worm a ton whenever I'm fishing for largemouth. Now, if I'm fishing specifically for smallmouth or spotted bass, a lot of times I'm gonna use this littler worm, this little four and a half inch robo worm. Now for me, a lot of times when I fish for spotted bass, and smallmouth, I'm fishing on rocky structure. A lot of times I'm going to just nose hook this worm and that's what I'm gonna use because I'm not so concerned about getting it caught in stumps and trees that may be down there because it's just rock. Now there have been times where I am fishing for spotted bass around brush piles. For instance, down on Lake Hartwell, I did this a lot. And in that case, I actually just rigged this worm up Texas style again to just help it come through that brush without getting hung. Now those two worm style baits, I think you could get away with using those pretty much anytime you're out there drop shotting. The only other style of soft plastic that I will use on a drop shot is some sort of minnow style bait. For instance, this is the X-Zone Hot Shot Minnow, and this is actually a Berkeley Maxent flatworm. Now, this is considered a worm on the package, but it kind of has more of that minnow presence. Now, typically when I use these minnow style baits, it's usually when I am fishing up in northern water, whether that's New York or on Lake Erie or on in Michigan and St. Clair, that's when I'm gonna use the minnow style baits. As far as soft plastics go, that's it. Now, when it comes to the rig itself, this is something that I also keep 
Really, really simple. I always use a cylinder style drop shot weight. A lot of times I'm just gonna use a lead weight like the one that I have here because I actually make these myself. And sometimes in tournament situations, I will use a tungsten just for that extra feel down there. But most of the time it's just a cylinder weight. This comes through cover the best. Period. Now, as far as the line goes, I use eight pound fluorocarbon line 95% of the time. Now I do attach it to a braided main line, but eight pound fluorocarbon is all that you need. Now, sometimes I do go up to 10 pound tests if I'm fishing around heavier cover stumps, thick grass. And sometimes I will go down to six pound tests if I'm fishing around a lot of really finicky bass in clear water. A lot of times this is when I'm smallmouth fishing, but 95% of the time, eight pound fluorocarbon is all you need. Now, as far as the rod goes, I like something within a couple inches of seven foot. A seven foot medium power, moderate action rod is what I like. Now, if it's seven foot one or if it's six foot 11, that's fine. This is the rod that I like. I already told you about it. It's a cob rod. It's called the kind of shaky. Now, people always ask about equipment, so I make sure to go through it. This is a Daiwa Tatula 2500 LT spinning reel. Now, as far as the hook goes, I also try to keep this simple. I use one hook when I'm fishing around heavier cover and I use one hook when I'm fishing more open water. The hook when I'm fishing around cover is this Gamagatsu rebarb hook. Usually it's a one-aught size that I use, sometimes a two-aught. I'm gonna use this and rig the plastic that I'm using in a Texas manner. Now, one trick that you can do with this hook is instead of putting that hook through the soft plastic, I'm actually just going to skin hook this bait on the side. This is going to keep this bait extremely weedless, but it's also gonna allow me to get a great hook set on that fish. Now, the other hook is the hook that I use when I'm fishing more open water situations. And it's a little bit thinner in diameter, but it's pretty much the same shape. This is a VMC Nico hook. I've also used just the Gamagatsu drop shot hook and I've had fine results with both of those. Now, when I go to nose hook a bait with this hook, the important thing is, is that you don't wanna pop your hook out the top because this leads to a ton of line twists. Instead, I'm gonna put my hook in the belly of that worm and actually put it kind of towards the nose just behind the plastic. This actually does a few things that can help you while you're drop shot fishing. One, it's gonna help eliminate that line twist. Two, it's actually gonna make that worm look a little bit better and stay a little bit more horizontal in the water column. And three, it actually helps that drop shot to be just a little bit more weedless when it is down there. Because a lot of times, again, I'm going to fish this hook when I'm fishing in open water, but you never know when there's going to be that random stump or that random little brush pile that's sitting around. And if I hit that, rigging it this way will help me to come through that. I will typically nose hook those minnow style baits when I'm fishing them. Now, another way that you can rig a drop shot is actually just wacky style, where it's the same way that you would fish it if you were fishing a wacky worm up shallow. I'm going to take that hook. I'm going to put it right through the middle of that bait. Now, the big thing about hooking it wacky style is that you will feel a lot more drag as you're pulling this through the water. So you typically have to fish it a little bit slower, but that's fine because the reason that I typically rig it wacky style is when I'm fishing in highly pressured bodies of water, waters that see a ton of drop shots. If, if a lot of guys are fishing a nose hooked bait and you come across there with that wacky rig bait that's fished really slow, you are going to get more bites than other guys. Now, a trick that I actually learned from the late Aaron Martins is actually rigging it what he called ghillie style. This isn't quite nose hooking the bait and it's not quite wacky rigging the bait either. You're actually going to take the hook and you're going to insert it about an inch into that soft plastic that you are using. The interesting thing about rigging it this way is that when you bring it through the water column, the head of that bait actually catches the water and will actually kind of kick the tail out as you bring it through the water column, which it just has a really unique action down there. And sometimes those unique actions can get you more bites. There's also not as much drag on that bait when you are fishing it in the water column. And surprisingly, it actually doesn't twist your line too much. It will twist it a little bit more than these other ways of rigging it but it's not too much to bear, especially if you're using braid to fluorocarbon leader. Now, one comment I get all the time on YouTube is that you can't fish drop shots in ponds. And that is simply not true. As a matter of fact, I made a video of me drop shotting in ponds. I'm gonna link it right here. Also, don't forget to check out the rods and all the equipment down below in the description. Thanks for watching this video. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.